I would have to agree with my uh, countryman, Werner Herzog, who was asked a similar question. He said, I'm not interested in, in truth. I'm interested in poetic truth. Yeah, as I stated in, in the film, you know, I'm a, I'm a constructionist, so basically everyone builds their own reality. And the idea of objective reality is kind of absurd to me. So in filmmaking, I think it comes down to uh, just learning your craft. And if you find something in fictional filmmaking that fits a film like the one we made, then by all means apply it. And if you find something in traditional journalism or in gonzo journalism, or a new journalism that you can incorporate into a structure like that, then by all means do it. And the most important thing for us was to make documentaries look like a cinematic experience, which a lot of documentaries just don't. Um, I became a documentary filmmaker by accident. I, I come from writing, and I come from, uh, from fictional film or narrative film, I guess, and um, I just like to see great images. And so we use less images than other filmmakers, but we make sure that the ones that we do use have content and beauty and aesthetic value. I deal, I deal with archetypes in my films, so I deal with a lot of like sort of classic uh, symbolism and, and sort of classic issues, but at the same time I wanted to incorporate the classic road movie, which I guess in American history would have been from East Coast to West Coast, plus the landscape in between. So the, the, um, the interviews and the locations were ordered in that quintessential, you know, kind of Route 66 kind of chronology, starting in Boston, Massachusetts, on the eastern seaboard, moving through the south, uh, the Midwest, into the Rockies, and then ending on the West Coast. So that was sort of, it was not the chronology within which it was shot, but it was the geographic chronology that I was looking for. Well, I mean, there's a film that I like a lot. It's called Who's Bozo Tixino. Um, it's made by a guy called Bill Daniel. It took him 16 years to make. It's also great in 16 mil. And it's basically him searching for the originator of a hobo graffiti. But the graffiti is not really essential. What's essential is his journey and also the background of hobo culture. It was rarely seen. It would, you would never see it on film four. But what I like about it is that I can just see Bill, you know, making that film. The majority of documentaries I see, I don't see a voice. It could just be done by anyone. I mean, the thing is, between, say, I guess, 12 and 21, I, wa I was on a steady diet of three films a day. So my agenda was to go through, basically, film history prior to actually making films, because I knew that when I, was, when I actually started making films, I wanted to pretty much quit watching movies altogether because I simply didn't want to fall into the trap of copying just the last movie that I enjoyed. Well, the thing was that it became pretty clear early on that I wanted to make films. The next thing was then that it became pretty clear that I was unemployable. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no turning back. I mean, if I wanted to have any kind of career, any kind of future, I had to make filmmaking work. Uh, when I came out of film school, uh, I, I think I tried for about uh, six months to get a job in the film industry. That was completely hopeless, plus I don't really have the personality to be employed. <laughs> and I just started buying my own equipment, save okay. some money, do some shitty jobs, barkeeper, bouncer, taxi driver, ambulance driver, and so on. Save some money and, and, and own your own equipment. Until today, my, best, my, my advice to young filmmakers, I made three short films, uh, five documentaries, a fictional feature film, I don't know, 12, 14, 16 music videos. Well, my first long um, documentary, feature length documentary, was called Hoodoo Rhythm, the Gospel of Primitive Rock and Roll, about an obscure underground rock and roll label in Switzerland. I made a band about, a film about a, a funeral orchestra that merged punk rock and gypsy, blues and country and Appalachian music. Made a documentary about the uh, fetish photographer Miron Zavnir. Uh, after that came a, came a road movie, it's a fictional film, The Road to Nod. Then we made a film called The Folk Singer about struggling young blues musicians in, in Texas. And I guess now The Kingdom of Survival, which kind of merges all those influences and, and thematically brings the whole thing full circle. Well, first of all, if we keep eating stuff that's going to kill us, 
you know, obviously we're making a mistake. So if we poison nature and poison our soil with all these inferior seeds, we've got a problem because we're basically the only species that's dumb enough to kill uh, or to, to exterminate ourselves. So do I romanticize nature? No, I don't. Nature's brutal and nature's hard. If you ever want to find yourself, you can only go to nature. And fundamentally, especially over the last few years, I believe in, in, in the oneness of all things. Like, nature and us, we're one organism. It's not us versus nature. We're one. So if we destroy one, we destroy the other. Sounds a little bit esoterical, but it's actually very, very sort of nuts and bolts, very simple grassroots idea. Now, one thing that also is uh, being discussed in the film is that we're basically raised like hothouse vegetables. We can't even survive anymore in nature. Well, let's say the majority of us. The majority of us need their mobile phone, they need their heater, their air conditioning, their KFC, and all that kind of stuff. And I think to a certain extent what that does is it, it destroys our consciousness and, and our humanness. I mean, if you walk around pick, Piccadilly Circus, I guess you go, Jesus Christ, what happened to our species? This is ridiculous. So I think that those people would, uh, would profit from spending maybe three months alone in the wilderness and maybe realizing that there's a lesson to be learned. You know, we have very much de sort of denaturalized ourselves. We call it civilization. I think it's gone too far. And as to sort of the cowboy frontier spirit or how I appear in the film, I actually try to appear really neutral in the film so that people could basically, the audience could sort of project themselves into my role. I try to not give a lot of myself. That's the sort of uh, anonymous kind of attire and, and all that. When, I, when it comes to me personally, I'm most definitely a cowboy. And I've got absolutely no problem in people uh, commenting on that because, I mean, if you take a look at how I make my films, it's the Wild West. And some people want to glorify that or put it down, I don't care. I mean, in fact, as you look at my biography, I'm pissed poor, I've made these films, I travel the world with these films like a troubadour. If I'm not a cowboy, I don't know who is.